Hey everybody, it's Magic Prepper, and I wanted to talk to you today about how gun manufacturers are generally betting against you as a consumer, and why firearms testing is relevant to preparedness. Now, I know I focus on firearms pretty heavily here on the channel, and that's just because they're a passion of mine that have gone hand in hand with my preparedness. So, that's just something I do here, and just be aware of that. Now, what am I talking about when I say gun manufacturers are betting against you? Well, it's not all gun manufacturers, and it's not every model of gun out there, but there is a ratio that they're looking for, and it generally coincides with cost or aesthetics or features, and there's a lot of reasons why they're betting against the fact that you're actually going to discover whether or not these firearms are reliable or operate properly. So, for example, I just recently picked up Palmetto State Armory Dagger, right? So this is a Gen 3 Glock clone. It's chambered in 9mm, and I like it because it takes Glock magazines, which is great, especially if your mag is running Glocks or something like that. And this one I bought as kind of a piecemeal package. So they have the frames on sale where you got two frames for 120 bucks. So we're talking, this is a $60 frame mixed with this complete slide. You see right here, it's got an RMR cut for an optic. It's got a lower third co-witness sights, a threaded barrel, and all that good stuff for $200. So this is a $260 gun. And then when you factor in FFL transfer fees and shipping, maybe 300 bucks, right? So for 300 bucks, I've got a Glock 19 clone that takes nine millimeter Glock magazines. And this is a Magpul P mag, but you can also use factory Glock mags. And it was 300 bucks, right? So man, if this thing is reliable and runs and works the way it's supposed to, this is a great deal, especially for those of us here in the preparedness community that operate under a certain budget that maybe doesn't allow for the purchase of $550 Glock, or especially if you wanted an MOS to be able to mount optics on it, it's gonna be, you know, 650 bucks. So this is a great deal if it works the way it's supposed to, which is why I'll be testing this on the channel here in the future to kind of see whether or not it can fulfill that role and be something worth spending your money on. Why does that matter? Why are they betting against you here? Well, when it comes to budget firearms like this one, $300 gun, right? You gotta understand, a lot of the people who are buying these are buying them because it's a necessity. They don't have the resources or the funds to buy something more expensive or something that they understand is better than this, right? This is not just as good as a Glock, but it is possibly good enough in the sense of defending yourself in a preparedness situation. However, they're also betting on the fact that if you can't afford a Glock, maybe you can't necessarily afford the ammo you need to train with it and the amount of training you need to do with it to find that breaking point that it could eventually get to, right? And this is safe, everything's empty, so don't worry about any of that, okay? But what I'm trying to say is that they're hoping you won't actually push it to the limit. They're hoping you won't find that breaking point so that there won't be an issue with you ever being concerned about the reliability of the pistol. So there's a ratio where they're betting against the fact that the majority of people who buy these firearms aren't going to push them to the limit. They're not going to test the equipment to the point where it finally breaks, and they won't actually find out whether or not it has the reliability factor that they're looking for. Now, this goes all over the different ends of the spectrum when it comes to the firearms industry as well. It's not just the inexpensive firearms. And of course, I have nothing bad to say about this PSA dagger so far. I haven't tested it out or shot it at all. I've seen my share of reviews, but I'm going to test it myself just to kind of see whether or not it could fulfill that role in a mag that I operate with that generally runs Glocks, right? So, hey, you can't really afford a Glock, but you can afford a dagger and we all run Glocks and now we can all share mags. Maybe that's still good to go. We're going to find that out. But this goes all the way to the other side of the spectrum too with more expensive firearms as well. So, for example, here's a Kimber Raptor 2 in stainless steel that is chambered in 10 millimeter. This is a much more expensive firearm. This is $1,650, right? And look, I'm not here to try to preach like this 1911 is the go-to for preparedness or anything like that. This is not really preparedness related. This is definitely more in the line of me just being kind of a gun guy and wanting something fancy, right? But here's the thing. Manufacturers like Kimber, maybe specifically Kimber, often also bet on the fact that you're not going to push this gun to the limit of finding out if it's going to work properly or not. They're selling you a very pretty gun. They're trying to make sure that you buy this based on its aesthetics and the fact that it has that form factor and everything else related to being a 1911. And then they have tons and tons of marketing and they spend a lot on advertising to kind of make you want something like this. And I have my own sentimental reasons for wanting a Kimber. So that might be problematic in some ways, but it's something that I just have to deal with. But besides that, this is a very expensive firearm uh, that also might not work, just like the PSA Dagger might not work. Why is that? Well, because they're betting that if you're buying this, mostly it's probably because of aesthetics. They're hoping this is going to end up being a safe queen. They might hope it's a show-off piece to kind of show off to your buddies about what a nice firearm you have and how expensive it is and everything else. And yes, this one is also unloaded, so don't worry about that, okay? But here's the thing, okay? 
And I know I'm not supposed to do that with a 1911. Relax. It's going to be fine. Okay? Here's the thing. They also are betting on the fact that most gun owners who buy these 1911s aren't going to push them to their limit. They're not going to shoot the ammo through them. And in fact, even Kimber themselves has a 500 round break in period, which I don't necessarily agree with, but hey, you know, whatever it is. And guess what? How many people do you think actually fire 500 rounds through that Kimber before they figure out it doesn't work or not? And with that break in period, how many people actually get to that 500 rounds and then say, well, I guess it's fine versus actually finding out if it is or not because of how expensive ammunition is, right? So these companies are betting against the fact that you're actually going to go out and use your stuff. Now, I do need to mention that the channel's biggest supporter is Midway USA, and Midway USA allows me to have access to a lot of this stuff. But both of these firearms were purchased with my own money, and they're both going to be tested out. And if I have anything neg negative to say about them, it's just because that's how they perform. And of course, I'll document everything and you guys can see it. But either way, this is just something that I wanted to bring to your attention because it's easy to see a good deal and say, man, that's a good deal, right? And it's just as good as a Glock or whatever you want to say, but it might not be, right? And you have to understand that you're being betted against in the sense of whether or not you're actually going to go use this, whether or not you're actually going to go shoot it, right? And just remember, okay, if you buy a $300 gun like a PSA dagger and it doesn't work well and it's not reliable, well, you wasted your money buying it instead of saving up a little more to buy something that you know will work like a Glock or even a Smith & Wesson M&P or something like that. Brands like Glock or HK, they don't sell you things that aren't going to work. Generally, they're going to work, right? When you're talking about pistols, those are brands that you know have it together and they sell reliable pistols because they expect their pistols to be used to that limit. They expect their pistols to be adopted by law enforcement agencies and military groups and everything else. So they make sure they're going to work because they know those limits are actually going to be reached. And the same thing can be said about different rifle companies, right? So you're talking about AR-15s. Yeah, you can go really cheap. And I've got a super cheap AR-15 uh, I'll be testing out here in the near future for the same exact reasons. Is it good enough to be prepared and ready to go with? Maybe. Or is it not worth your time? Like, that's what we need to find out so we're not wasting time, money, or effort on these things. And brands like, you know, I don't know, BCM are good to go, right? You know, we know that they have put in the time and the effort to make sure that their products are high quality versus any of these brands that are going to sell you an AR-15 for under $600, I mean, might not be the same case. So these are things that we can pay attention to, but it still is worth our time to try to find that perfect combination of budget meets reliability, meets quality, meets functionality, meets feature set, and everything else. Because we want to spend our money smartly and intelligently, unless you're me and you buy a Kimber Raptor 2 for no reason related to preparedness besides you just like it. And I can admit that at least. But the other thing is that you have to understand that even if something's expensive doesn't mean it's going to work properly or be reliable. That ratio is against you. And the house always wins. And they're betting against you as a gun owner and as somebody who wants to buy something. And especially the fact that it's on both ends of the spectrum made me want to make this video to just kind of let you know about that. Because, I mean, it's just, it's a, it's a wager, right? And we're talking huge volumes of sales. Well, if 90% of people don't actually take their stuff out and push it to the limit, then that 10% they have to deal with in the sense of returns or repairs or whatever else, eh, it's eaten up in the cost of that 90% that didn't care at all or didn't even try. And honestly, I think that might even be, uh, you know, being optimistic. I don't know if 90% of gun owners actually go out and shoot their stuff to push it to the limit. It might be even smaller than that. It might only be, you know, 5% of gun owners actually do that. And a lot of it's budget related, and I understand that. So... Let's try to figure out if things are going to work for us. Understand that that industry is betting against you in the sense of whether or not you're going to use your stuff. And uh, besides that, that's going to be it for Magic Prepper.